Welcome back to yet another bonus installment of the 380 ACP Ammo Quest, where I'm testing 380 ammo, but with a specific emphasis on a micro pistol and its 2.8 inch barrel. Don't care how the ammo performs out of longer barrels, you know, if you read the specifications, frequently manufacturers will be testing and rating their ammo from a 4 inch pistol, but who carries a 4 inch pistol nowadays? Everybody's got these little things with a little 2.8 inch barrel, and that's enough of a barrel difference that the ammo may perform significantly differently from this little 2.8 inch barrel than it would from the 4 inch, so we're testing from the 2.8. And I thought I had completed my ammo quest because I had tested a lot of different ammo, but uh, my viewers have responded and said, hey, we've got some more that we want you to try. And so one viewer sent me a box from Underwood. This is a new loading. It is the Hornady XTP bullet, and it is rated here on the box at 1,025 feet per second. Now, Underwood is known for loading their ammo hot, for extracting maximum velocity from any cartridge that they load. This is standard pressure. They do offer a so-called plus P load, and I have a blog article on my blog about why I'm not testing plus P uh, in 380, because there is no SAMI standard for it. I don't test it. but. Uh, this is a standard pressure load and, you know, I gotta say I'm optimistic because the XTP, I tested five loadings of XTP in the Ammo Quest and every one of them made it into the winner's circle. The XTP proved to be probably the most effective design for a 380. So what will happen when we take the same XTP bullet and we drive it at Underwood's typical velocities? Let's find out. We're going to use some clear ballistic synthetic gelatin. We're going to head to the range. We're going to also test in genuine organic ballistic gel using four layers of IWBA specification, 16 ounce per square yard heavy denim. And for a reminder, my testing standards, what I'm looking for is the same as what the FBI looks for, which is a minimum of 12 inches and a maximum of 18 inches of penetration through ballistic gel. That's not through a body. Let's not get confused on that. It is, the bullet has to penetrate that far through ballistic gel in order to have enough power to be able to effectively, reliably penetrate deep enough in a human body to disrupt the vital organs from any angle and through any perceivable obstacle like an intervening arm. So, let's get to the range and give these Underwoods a shot and see how they do. In the bear gel, the Underwood bullets were, like so many others before it, they were affected by the bounce back phenomenon. Which is where, as you can actually see in the slow motion footage here, the bullet actually penetrated deeper and then bounced off the end of the penetration and, and traveled backwards back through the damage cavity. And so what that means is when we look at the picture of where the bullet came to rest, it actually did penetrate deeper and you can actually see that in the bounce back tracks. So we're gonna have to compensate for that using Charles Schwartz's quantitative ammunition selection mathematical formula to calculate how deeply these bullets at this velocity and with this expansion, they would have actually penetrated. And once we do that, we find that the results are pretty good. They're a little short for what we're used to with XTP bullets, but they're still very good. Shortest bullet came in at 12 inches. Three of them come in at 12 and a half. And the furthest bullet made it to 13 inches. So that's all excellent penetration. The Underwood XTPs through the denim, uh, yeah, this is what overpenetration looks like. We had two that were great. One stopped at 13 and a half and one stopped at 15 and a quarter. Those were pretty much ideal, but the other three just did not expand and just kept going and going and going. The Energizer bullets here. One of them went to 21 and a quarter. Next one went to 23 and a half. And the last one went all the way to 24 inches. And that's just just terrible over penetration. Our cutoff, remember, was 18 inches. The bare gelatin ones are flawless. These are great. These are bigger than XTPs normally expand. But in denim, we have nothing, nothing good happened. Uh, three of them here totally clogged up and failed to expand in any way. I got a completely classic case of bullet plugging up with denim try to pull that out of there and it 
can't even get it out of there. So those bullets are no better than a full metal jacket would have been. And then when they did sort of expand, I mean, this is expansion large size and it's got nasty cutting pedals. This would, this would do some damage. This would be a nasty bullet. Uh, this one is about halfway there. Half of it tried to expand, half of it didn't. But in either case, it's inconsistent, uh, which, you know, if I had my preference, I would want a more consistent performing bullet. Um, we got that with some of the Hornady XTP rounds. I'm puzzled on this because I tested a lot of XTPs and never did they fail. Uh, never did they plug up. And in the, in the roughly 20 XTPs that I tested, I had no case in denim where they completely plugged up like this. But in this round, we had three out of the five happen that way. I have no explanation for you on that. All I can say is, uh, if I was uh, having to defend myself at a nude beach, so where clothing was not an issue, I think the Underwoods are a fantastic performer. But in cases where there may be clothing involved, uh, I wasn't that impressed with how they actually performed. Oh, well, that was bipolar. We had fantastic performance in the bear gelatin. Um, they were uh, on the shorter side of what XTPs have penetrated before. However, they expanded larger than any of the XP XTPs have. So that was pretty good. Uh, the velocity was incredibly high for an XTP from the little 2.8 inch barrel. Um, on average, the prior XTPs I've been testing had clocked in at around 800 feet per second. The fastest ones were an average of 851, if I remember properly, from the Hornady Custom. And these were like 913. So these were a smoking fast load. But when we got to the denim, uh, I, I can't explain it. I don't know why three of them completely clogged up and failed to expand at all. And the other two uh, penetrated well. They stopped well, but they were inconsistent. They didn't, they didn't expand like the winning rounds did. Uh, these were kind of random. And I, I don't know how to, how to explain that because they're all using the same bullet. They're all Hornady XTPs. They should perform similarly. Uh, in this case, they didn't. And I don't know how to explain that. I don't know if it's luck of the draw or whatever, but I do know that I fired about 20 bullets in the other loadings into denim cover gel and they didn't behave like these ones did. So I can't answer why. All I can say is based on the results that I got, for whatever reason why the results happened, based on the results I got, I wouldn't be choosing these as a winner. And I really expected to be. I really expected this was going to change the results of my testing. I thought these were going to be the head and shoulders winner, but they weren't. Uh, instead, I would classify them in, in the categories that I rated the 380 rounds. I would put these as definitely better than FMJs. Um, definitely better than FMJs because even when they clogged up and over penetrated, they just acted like an FMJ would. And so in the worst possible case, they performed exactly the same as an FMJ in its best possible case. So better than FMJs, but the performance was not enough to put them in the winner's circle. So a decent load, but I wouldn't choose this load. Uh, I wish it performed better, but it didn't. But thanks to my viewer who donated the ammo for the test so we could test it. Thanks to you for watching, and please hit subscribe so you'll be notified the next time a video is posted.